So the other day, one of my colleagues at my company, Emirate.io, asked a really good question about tokenomics and what token, what 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 are tokenomics, uh, and 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 how do they how do they work? And so what I did, because I'm awesome and I'm exceptionally helpful, is not only did I answer his question, Pradium, this one's for you, but I also wrote a blog post about it because I was so, I was I, I, I was, I just wanted to be exceptionally useful. So here we go. Let's talk about the article that I wrote for a colleague of mine. Pradium, this one's for you. Understand the tokenomics of a crypto token. Before we go on and look at what tokenomics is, Pradium, we need to first understand what a crypto token is. Simply put, a crypto token is a crypto coin that is based on a blockchain platform that can be swapped or exchanged with another blockchain, and that gives many incentives to holders of said token. So, what are the tokenomics? Is it just a funny word for economics in the token world? Well, not really. The, ter the term tokenomics was formed by combining the words token and economics. So, the term tokenomics basically describes the economics of a crypto token. It refers to all the crypto token's features that make it desirable to investors. That's why tokenomics are important. The tokenomics for a specific crypto token are usually clearly detailed in a project white paper that no one actually reads. And it should help you understand the crypto token's objective, functionality, allocation policy, and more. So why is tokenomics important? Projects can use blockchain technology to create micro economies. They need to decipher how tokens should work within their ecosystem to become self-sustaining. When it comes to tokens, there's no such thing as a one size fits all attitude. Blockchain has opened the door to a wide range of applications and implementations. And tokenomics allows teams to design a new model or adapt an existing one that fits within the project aims to it fits with what the project aims to achieve. If done well, this can create a stable and high functioning platform. One of the things that I have spent copious amounts of hours on Pridium is figuring out tokenomics for multiple tokens that I have built in the past. Some of you guys, some of you guys, the listeners out there know, you guys were there when I forked Bitcoin. You were there when I forked uh, Litecoin, right? You guys were there when I experimented with all these different tokens and trying to figure out how tokenomics work, right? When it comes to security tokens or, or uh, work tokens, utility tokens, right? There's a lot of stuff that's involved. So let's talk about this stuff. So what is the significance of the value in tokenomics, token economics? Well, the world we see around us is driven by incentives. Here's an example. A child, for example, attends school because it will provide them with the opportunity to earn an education that will benefit them in the future. Or at least that's the assumption our parents told us. Right, Mama? You told me to go to school, get those A's because I'm Asian, not a Bijan. People adhere to their dentist recommendations to maintain dental hygiene and minimize the risk of any dental problems. So, the incentive structure is present in every institution, business, framework, as well as pretty much everywhere else that you can look at. Cryptocurrencies are not any different here, and cryptocurrencies were not intended to be free of the incentive structure, and so the tokenomics model was born. Value is the most essential factor that can propel the foundation of tokenomics. Although crypto assets have enthralled an entire world with several promises and economic opportunity, they lack tangibility. A US dollar may be seen and touched, but it is not the case with cryptocurrencies. So we have to talk about the types of tokens. If you want to learn about tokenomics, it is essential for you to first understand the different types of tokens. Tokens can be classified according to the structure of tokens and also on the basis of usage. The structure of tokens can be classified into multiple different ways. So let's talk about them. The first one is layer one tokens. These types of tokens are native to a particular blockchain and are used to power all the services in the blockchain. For example, the Binance chain is an example of a layer one token in cryptocurrencies. Ether or Ethereum, the Ethereum network is another well-known example of a layer one token in cryptocurrencies. Essentially, layer one means it's the bottom. It's the bottom. It's what runs everything. It's the platform. It's the infrastructure, the architecture. So above that is layer two or layer two tokens. 
In the meaning of what is tokenomics, these types of tokens on layer two have a distinct representation. They're utilized in the case of decentralized applications in a specific network. So what we're talking about is layer two is all about applications, whereas layer one is the infrastructure that runs it. Consider it kind of like Windows is your layer one, and then Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Facebook, the internet, Chrome, these are all kind of layer two. A good example of this, one of my favorites from the past, is OMG or Omise Go. OMG tokens, for example, are classified as layer two tokens since they are used in Omise Go, a decentralized project on the Ethereum network. So on the basis of usage, tokens can be ca categorized into essentially three different categories. The first is security tokens. Security tokens are called investment contracts, and they must meet several conditions for the same. These tokens are subjected to securities and regulations, and in most cases, if you don't want to be classified as a security token, you have to pass the Howey test. Google that. I spent so much time with lawyers trying to figure out how to create utility tokens that were not actually security tokens because they didn't pass the Howey test. Anyway, in simple terms, security tokens on blockchain will get their value from tradable or external sources. There has to be some sort of intrinsic value there, right? For this reason, they will always be subject to government regulations, making them a safe choice, but also regulated. This is an, an example of this would be SIA funds or SF on the SIA network. On the SIA network, work is done with one of the, uh, the SIA network is one of the best examples of, of this type of token, security token. So let's go into utility tokens. Utility tokens are the type of tokens that we here at Emirate are all about. With Helium, Helium is utility token. Utility tokens are another significant type of token that you will come across in tokenomics. These types of tokens are issued through an initial coin offering or ICO, and they're useful for financing a network. The HNT or Helium token is an example of this. ICOs in many cases are essential for funding project development. In another example of this, a utility token would be the BAT or basic attention token as an example of utility token that was first delivered via an ICO. And so we have security tokens, we have work tokens, and then we have uh, value, value tokens, right? Bitcoin is a value token. So those are the three. When it comes to classification of tokens, if we're going to go even deeper here, guys, when it comes to the classification of tokens, tokens can also be categorized into two categories, fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens. So what's the difference? When it comes to fungible tokens, these tokens are recognized for having the same value as well as replication faculty. The scenario of Ethereum on it, or Ether on Ethereum is a perfect example of a fungible token. Ethereum tokens value is the same and they can replace each other since their value is always the same. However, in non-fungible tokens, something that you guys know about, NFTs, do not share the same value and so they are always unique. NFTs have been tr have been trending a lot in recent times, and they've sparked a lot of interest in tokenomics, especially with high-profile NFT auctions, because it's always one of one. So the tokenization of assets such as real estate, artworks, pictures, and collectibles are also possible with NFTs has sparked a new wave of digital ownership and a revolution around it, while also showcasing the potential of the tokens themselves. So whenever you're thinking about tokenomics, what are some of the factors that you should think about and you should include in, let's first say, for example, if you're going to invest? Well, if you're considering the tokenomics of a crypto token, any factor that is even slightly concerning the value of that crypto token should always be considered. Most of the factors that constitute a crypto's tokenomics can be found on websites like CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap.com, but still verify with the project white paper to ensure its accuracy. To determine the worth of a crypto token, some of the most important metrics to consider are what we're going to talk about right now. The first is allocation and distribution of tokens. Make sure you understand how the token will be distributed. Most tokens are generated through any of the following ways. Either they are released through a fair launch or they're pre-mined. And the pre-mined ones are the ones where you get shafted because all the well, pre-mined tokens are the ones that are given to the developers and they exit scam you just like BitConnect. A fair launch is when crypto is mined, earned, owned, and regulated by the entire community. And in many cases, sometimes they get a, uh, uh, around this with foundations, 
right? Foundations are a nice way of making sure that the, not all the tokens are in circulation. Uh, but anyway, before making the token public, there are no early access or private allocations in this one. Bitcoin, for example, and Dogecoin are a few examples of this. Pre-mining, on the other hand, is where several of the crypto tokens are generated and distributed to a select group of addresses, typically project developers, early investors, and other team members, before they are made public. And actually, one of the funniest things that I that just I was just reminded of is how crazy the scammy ICO boom was in 2016-17 that I remember getting invited to pre-pre-pre-pre-VIP early access tokens so there was like the pre-mine and then there was the pre-pre access there was the pre-access and then there was the pre-pre-access and the pre-pre-pre-vip guys the, the scams in 2016-17 were amazing the amount of permutations and variations of scam was uh, it was a clown fiesta in amazingness clown fiesta in amazingness anyway However, the point is, you must check to see if there's any... <laughs> oh, man. You just have to check. You just have to check if it's going to be pre-mined. You just have to check whether there's any wallets that is hoarding a considerable percentage of the circulating token supply. If there is, then there's a high chance of the whale dumping their hodlings or holdings, causing the price of the token to drop in a moment. You can get exit scammed, essentially. So pre-mined, bad idea. On the other hand, you can assume that if a project is credible and that it truly cares about the future development of the project and it distributes the tokens to as many members as possible, then it could be a good bet. The next thing that you want to think about is the supply of the token. The supply of a to crypto token is a primary component of tokenomics. When it comes to crypto, there are three types of supply to keep an eye on. There is the total supply, circulating supply, and the max supply. The total token supply refers to the number of tokens that are in existence presently, excluding any that have been burned. The circulating su supply of a token refers to the number of tokens that have been issued thus far and are presently in circulation. And finally, a token's max supply is the maximum number of tokens that will ever be created. There is no determined max supply for some tokens, like Dogecoin. It just keeps on printing. But if you observe that the circulating supply of a particular token has been increased by a project developers regularly over time, then you can assume that the token's value will rise in the future. Contrarily, if too many tokens are being released at the same time or very often, the token's value may plummet. So this leads us to the token model. So let's talk about that. To make certain you understand if it's an inflationary or deflationary token, that's why we need to understand the token model. An inflationary token will be continuously will continuously be produced over time. Such tokens do not have a max supply or a cap limit of tokens that can ever be created. It's kind of like the U.S. dollar, which is one of the best scam coins of all time. I'm sorry. A deflationary token model, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Bitcoin is a good example of this. In this model, there is a max supply the token is capped at. For example, the total supply of Bitcoin is capped at 21 million, which makes Bitcoin the best asset to buy on the face of this planet. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. Most... Most POS or proof of stake tokens, such as Ethereum, are inflationary in order to reward the delegators and validators of the network. Some crypto tokens have a dual token model, where one token is used as security to raise funds and the other is used for utility inside the network. Examples of projects that function on a dual token model are MakerDAO, Axie Infinity, that fun little game, Filmio, and VeChain Thor, which, by the way, I'm a node owner. The X node, baby. Some of you guys like hearing that. Anyway, so finally, we have to talk about market capitalization. Market capitalization. The term market cap or market capitalization of a token refers to a metric that it measures the relative size of the token. It is calculated by multiplying the present market price of the token with the total number of tokens in circulation. While the market capitalization of a crypto token may provide some insights for its performance and size, it is not crucial to note that it is not the same as money inflow. Therefore, it does not reflect the amount of money in the market.
In addition to the market cap, you can also check a project's fully diluted market cap, which is the, the theoretical market cap if the token's max supply was already in circulation. The higher the market cap of a token and the lower its circulating supply, the more valuable the token could be in the future. Okay, so tokenomics also involves understanding how crypto token can help address the challenges of the future. And so this is one of those things that you need to think about when it comes to investing in any type of token. Does it actually have use cases? Is it actually going to be valuable? And is it actually something people want to use and is actually necessary to improve the world? Most applications and tokens out there don't do anything for the world. They actually don't improve a whole lot. So think about that. Many teams in the crypto space that are responsible for the development of a network do not end up as its rulers. So developers must accept the fact that what works for now in their token project may not be the thing that works in the future. The network's growth and maturity may necess necessitate changes in the way the token is being governed. So to summarize all this up, when it comes to tokenomics, tokenomics is an essential concept. You need to understand when deciding which crypto to invest in as the factors included will have a significant impact on your investment. However, when trying to value a crypto, also keep in mind that you need to do even more diligence into the use cases, market demand, and strength of the leadership team. Let's talk about that for just a minute. When it comes to any type of crypto token, you guys have heard this before, do your own research. Do your own research. Do your own research. Actually, doing your own research has turned out to be something that has turned out to be like a negative in some ways in some circles which is crazy that that we're now that that if, if you're doing your own research you're somehow not mainstream or something like that but the thing that i want to really want to talk about is the strength of the team i don't care what type of great idea you think you thought of or you think you got ideas are a dime a dozen my friends ideas are a dime a dozen I am very, I am not very impressed in most cases of the ideas that are coming out. But it actually doesn't matter if those ideas are a dime a dozen. It actually doesn't matter if those ideas have been done before. None of that actually matters. It's about execution. It's about the team. It's about the leadership team. It's about, an, about having the right leaders. I've talked about this in my, in my, um, startup questions answered you guys should check those out too like the leadership team is so essential I, like i don't care if your idea isn't new or novel i just want to know if you can execute can you guys deliver are you grinders are you hustlers are you going to do everything necessary to achieve the goal that you said that you wanted to achieve and so when it comes to investing in any crypto tokens the tokenomics are great understand the tokenomics understand them deeply understand them understand them inside and out so that you can that you understand how outside influences, how market uh, market effects uh, change the valuation and the value of your token. Yes, this is all good. At the end of the day, the token's not going to survive that you don't have a good management team. So make sure that you look at the leadership team and the management team and the community. Look at those things to make an informed decision on whether you should invest in that token, which by the way, of course, none of this is investment advice because I don't know what I'm talking about. But there is one thing that I do know a lot about. It's this company called Emirate.io and they support this podcast. It's amazing. Emirate.io is a wonderful company based out of Atlanta who builds retail miners for people like you and me. You can go to www.emrit.io, check it out. Get yourself a miner. Get in the game of crypto. Get mining, baby. I tell you, it's the future.